Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. I had the gratifying experience of confronting a difficult guest directly, and truth be told, it felt absolutely amazing. The second story. Night of Chaos, when a power outage turns a restaurant shift into an epic nightmare. The third story, how I outsmarted my shady manager and walked away triumphantly from my job. The first story is, the day before my last day, I finally met the one. I've been working the front desk at this property for about 10 years, FOS for the last three years and NA for most of the rest. Three weeks ago I put in my notice and I just knew at that time that I wouldn't be able to keep my attitude to myself, with the knowledge that I'll be gone in a few weeks anyway. I wasn't going to go out of my way to be rude, but if a guest was SH to me I knew that I would probably be mouthy back to them. The next three weeks went by uneventfully. Now it's Saturday night. I've got one more shift tomorrow afternoon, which will be extremely quiet and chill no doubt. We have some activity in the hotel, but it's not exactly super packed and I'm not really slammed. I came in to about 60 arrivals, most of which got in before the wedding shuttles left about two hours after my shift started. I work by myself these days thanks to pandemic staffing. No big deal. And then he came, my white whale, the man who would be the one to draw out my sass and my condescension. In this tale, I will be me. The man from room 526 will be class act, or CA for short. It's about 9.30 p.m. The phone at the desk rings. Me. Front desk. This is OP speaking. CA. Hey, I just turned on the AC in here and the fan sounds like a truck is driving through my room. It literally feels like it's going to explode. A pretty common complaint, to be honest. I think that's true no matter where you are. Some people just aren't used to having the AC unit in the room with them. He didn't need to be so hyperbolic, but that's not going to ruffle my feathers by itself. I start to give him my standard reply. Me. Okay, so, CA. I don't want any BS comments, and I don't want you condescending to me either. I pause. I admit I'm a bit disarmed by the way he started with me. I learned later that at check-in he had commented to me about how busy the hotel was, and I corrected him saying that we were only at 50%. It seems he has taken offense to that and remembered that interaction from six hours prior. I'm thinking that my stock reply to his problem would easily fall under the category of BS comment. I usually offer to move their room or have an engineer come take a look, but explain that we use the same units in all the rooms, and that might not significantly reduce the noise level. So I go to a different stock answer. Whenever someone does not want any of the solutions I have to offer, I ask, me, okay, so what solution do you want me to offer you? CA, you're being a little a-hole right now. And there he was. I'd finally found him. Without hesitation, I replied in the most natural and honest way I could unfettered by fear of consequences. Me, you're being an a-hole too. CA, I'm being an a-hole? Me, yes you are. Would you like me to offer any solutions for your AC? He begins popping off about how hard he's going to come after me and blah blah blah. I inform him that my last day is tomorrow and I don't care. He hangs up. Less than a minute later he's in the lobby. He's come around the desk to get close to me. I stay where I am. I don't even turn to face him. My hands stay in my pockets. My tone is still calm and even. I have him pegged as the kind of guy who's all bluster and he doesn't seem drunk enough to do anything stupid. CA. You want to be a tough guy now? Call me an a-hole again. Me. You're an a-hole. CA. Oh, you're a tough guy, huh? Call me an a-hole again. Me. You're an a-hole. Yes, he asked me twice and twice I obliged. He tells me he wants to talk to a manager. I explain that I am a manager and that there's no one else working the desk. I ask him one more time if he wants me to do anything about his AC as he runs off to the bar to find literally anyone else to complain to. Then he returns and leans against the desk glaring at me. CA. Later when you leave, I'm gonna get you in the parking lot. Oh yeah, believe it. Me. Oh yeah? You're gonna stand there until my shift ends? Okay then. I take out my phone and bring up the local police's number, which I still have saved from all my years working in A. If he's going to threaten me that blatantly, I don't have any issues skipping my normal three-strike system and going straight to the nuclear option. I'm moments away from pushing the call button when the banquet manager arrives. I genuinely like this manager. He's reliable and generally very pleasant to work with, so I do feel bad that he now has to talk to this SH head. He also holds absolutely no authority over me nor anything that happens at the front desk. The version of events that CA gives to the banquet manager is truly incredible. By CA's telling of the story he called the desk to complain about the AC noise, 
and then I immediately just started calling him an a-hole. And then he came down to the desk and I called him an a-hole three more times. I'm staying quiet, just smiling. The banquet manager offers to have his room move, which CA immediately accepts. I make him new keys and he goes on his way. My shift ends in a few minutes and once my relief arrives, I plan to call the local police anyway just to get me to my car. The cops here are pretty chill and usually have plenty of time for stuff like that. The second story is... The worst shift of my life. This happened about eight years ago, and I had forgotten about this night, until a conversation with a coworker reminded me of it. So I'm just gonna share this story here. I was 22 and had only been managing for a few months at the restaurant. Managers at the time were also the bartender and responsible for to-go orders. We had a big tournament in town, and it was my first year managing during this. Towards the beginning of the shift, a storm slash tornado came through and knocked out a lot of the area's power. We had partial power lights, and since everything in the kitchen ran on gas, I was told to stay open. Yippee effing kaye. I learned the hard way throughout the night what does and doesn't work with only partial power. First obvious things that didn't work, the computers and the phone. I was told to do cash only. To-go orders were redirected to my cell phone, and all tickets and checks were handwritten. Also realized that I couldn't get into the register, since we didn't have a key for it, and the computer was offline. Had to break into the register with a crowbar. Apparently all the other restaurants around us had the smart idea of closing, completely effing us. We thought the cash-only part would slow people, absolutely not. We ended up on an over three-hour wait, with non-stop catering orders and the restaurant slammed. Now let's get to the chaos. I'm running around like a chicken with its head cut off trying to tend the bar, answering the non-stop flooding of calls, putting together and making sure catering orders were correct, tracking down servers because the kitchen can't read their handwriting, throwing guesses out for alcohol prices since pricing wasn't on the drink menu, double-checking all of FOH math, reminding them constantly how to add up the tax or just doing it for them, and constantly checking on my staff and tables. Every customer that walked through those doors was immediately warned about the situation and wait time. Everyone swore up and down that wasn't a problem, but we all know how that effing goes. Everyone seemed understanding at first, but I guess after a few drinks their patience went out the effing door. First guy approached me to complain. We're standing in the middle of the restaurant talking. His complaints quickly turned to belittling me. As he's standing there going off on me, I SHU not, a line, an MFing line of middle-aged men filed behind this man, each taking their turn to cuss me out and make me out to be the SH human alive. All I could do was hold back tears and say I'm sorry. Thought I was done with the worst conga line ever, just to turn around to some kid, my age if not younger, requesting I come to his table to talk to him and his girl. This kid proceeds to tell me I'm a sorry A manager with a sorry A kitchen, that my servers are out here busting their A, and my pathetic A was effing them out of hard earned tips etc. I don't know what came over me but I straight up cussed this kid out, basically told him he was a daddy's money piggybacking B assured him my sorry A and my sorry A kitchen was busting our A's, etc. Gave a half A sorry to him and walked away from the table and into a cubby out of view of guests. Minus one table. As soon as I got it to that cubby, I tried calling my boss to update her that SH had hit the fan, only to have my first slash only panic attack and started crying and hyperventilating incoherently. The one table that could see me and had seen or heard everything that had happened leading up to that moment actually came into the cubby and started being my personal cheerleader and helping me with some breathing exercises. Shout out to you wherever you are. I also had a couple of guys at my bar who I attended to majority of the night, who had made multiple comments about how hard I was working and complimenting my work ethic throughout the night. I guess it was obvious I had been crying, because when I went to cash out their over $300 tab, they asked me how old I was, then said here's a tip, you're 22, don't take life so seriously. That's it, that was my actual tip on a $300 plus dollar check. Fast forward to closing time, I probably should have noticed way earlier, not gonna lie. It had been one thing after another. But yeah, apparently our cooler slash freezer doesn't work on partial power. We also just got our truck that morning and had ordered extra in preparation for the tournament. So me and the kitchen are now having to temp everything and load everything into a convoy of cars of employees from another location so they can keep it in their store's freezer for us. Did I mention our cooler slash freezer is upstairs? Yeah. So we finished that BS. I'm being a human calculator and having to do every server's report by hand, based off their handwritten checks. Meanwhile, the kitchen is making a group effort to knock out dishes because oh yeah, dish machine doesn't work either, and the dishes were practically to the ceiling, when suddenly we no longer had partial power, but we're sitting in complete darkness now. I said screw it, locked up the store, leaving it a complete mess and we all went home. And yes, I had contact with my bosses the whole night giving a play-by-play -play of the whole night. I begged numerous times to close, but no, you got it. Haha, 
I did not. The third story is... Sweet Revenge. This has been years ago, like late 1980s or early 1990s. I worked in a 24-hour grocery store and was the cheese shop manager, which was part of the deli. It was a part-time position that could have led to a full-time job. Now I would fill in all over the store. I think I helped in every department and even the office when they were short-handed. Anyways, each department was only allowed a certain number of full-time employees. So being part-time, I knew I wouldn't be full-time unless someone quit or died. Anyways, I noticed I was being scheduled 40 hours a week for 19 weeks and scheduled 10 hours the 20th week, and then back to 40 hours a week for the next 19 weeks. This went on for almost four years and I had had enough. So I asked my manager, the deli manager, what the deal was. She said that company policy stated if anyone works 40 hours a week for 20 weeks in a row, you were automatically a full-time employee and received all the benefits of a full-time employee. So she could not allow me to become full-time, as she didn't have a full-time position available so this was one way around it. That peeved me off but I didn't say anything and just acted cool. It so happened to be a week before the 4th of July, a three-day weekend. One of the busiest weekends for a grocery store. Everyone had requested off except for me and about three others, and we were all scheduled nine hours a day all three days. I didn't say anything to anyone. I acted normal. When Thursday night came around, two in the morning, I got up and went in. I talked to the baker and donut fryer. Everything was cool. I went into the manager's office and took my name and info out of a Rolodex. This was before computers. I went upstairs to the main office and took my whole entire file, shoved it all down the back of my pants, went out and talked to the night manager and stalkers about our busy weekend, went home and never went back, never called in. It was like four weeks before the store manager called me, as he had to get my info from the corporate office. I told him the whole story and he said I should have told him, like it would have done any good. All that happened was my manager got demoted to assistant deli manager for like six months. Then they reinstate her to deli manager and shortly after that assistant store manager. I only really felt bad for the three coworkers I left hanging. Would I do it again? Sure, and have. You don't need to give two weeks notice or worry about what a supervisor will do or say. It's your life, your decision. They have to pay you. They may hold your last pay till you talk to them, but after a couple of months they will give up and send you your last check. My state is an at-will state which means they can fire you for no reason. So why not quit for no reason or with no notice? And as for reference, at least in my state, potential employers can only ask, did you work here? Yes or no. And would you hire them again? Yes or no. You can't give any further information or explanation, just yes or no. Because if they do, and if you found out, you could sue our old employer. But how would you ever find out? Have a friend call as a potential employer and ask those questions and record the conversation? As my state is only a one-party state, which means you don't need to tell the person on the other end of the phone call you're recording them. Been there, done that. Work to live, people. Don't live to work. Subscribe, click the like button if you want to support the channel. Thank you for watching.